Hey guys, my name's Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're working on the new body Ram truck, the 2019 and up fifth generation Ram heavy duty. This is the 2500 through the 5500 series trucks. Today we're gonna show you guys an exciting uh, thing that we're gonna do to this truck today. We're actually gonna take out the center jump seat and we're going to replace it with a full length floor center console. Now the reason why we're doing this is obviously to give us a lot more storage, um, but we also want to install the infotainment.com CD player upgrade and the smartphone wireless charging upgrade, which is available for all the trucks that have the floor length center console. So believe it or not, you won't lose any features or functions whenever you go from the center jump seat to the full length console. You'll retain um, your USB connectivity, you'll retain your AC vents for the rear seat, everything. So what you'll need is you'll need obviously a full length console, um, you'll need some brackets, and some hardware from Mopar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a blog post on our website which will tell you all the parts you'll need so you can order that for yourself. We'll also give you some tips on where you can find center consoles used online. So let's get started. All right guys, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and remove this lower trim panel here. This is the panel that covers up the jack. That will allow you to remove the two 15 millimeter bolts on the front lower portion of the seat and the two 15 millimeter bolts on the back side, bottom of the front seat. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, now on the back side we have two 18 millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and remove those. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the two nuts that hold in the center seat uh, bracket. It actually attaches to the passenger seat, so there's two half-inch nuts that we're gonna take out um, right under here. All right, next there's two 10 millimeter nuts right here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those two nuts. All right, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the connector now. Press the tab, and it comes right out. All right, now that we have the four bolts and the four nuts removed, now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna pull the seat away from the center uh, seat. Uh, we're gonna pull the passenger seat away from the center seat, and then we're gonna pull it out the back door here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right guys, we went ahead and removed the front passenger seat. So as you could see, there's 
four bolts total and four nuts. This is where we removed the two nuts from up front and the two in the back. Now that we've removed all of that hardware, we removed the seat, obviously we unplugged it. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the center seat. There's only two eight millimeter screws that hold in the front cubby, and then there's two half inch bolts that hold the remainder of the seat to the truck. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those now. So we'll go ahead and remove the liner, and that'll give us access to the two eight millimeter screws. Once you remove the screws, you can just pop this out of place, and that'll give you access to the front uh, half-inch bolt. Okay, so underneath the driver's seat, this is the wiring for the uh, center seat. So what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and remove this wiring and disconnect it. All right, for those of you who are planning on selling your center seat, maybe you're gonna sell it online, you're gonna wanna remove the seatbelt receptacle. Now that's attached to the bottom portion of the driver's seat with a large Torx screw or bolt. Um, so in order to remove that bolt, you will need to remove your driver's seat as well, just enough to get access to that bolt so you can include the seatbelt receptacle uh, with that center seat if you decide to sell it. All right, now that our center seat has been removed, now we're gonna wanna focus our attention on the lower console here. So this is actually a storage bin. So around this storage bin, there's some trim. The trim will come out because it's just held in with retaining clips, but the actual bin assembly is held in with four seven millimeter screws. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all the trim, and then we're gonna remove the screws so we can pull the bin out. Now you're gonna wanna use a long extension to get the screws at the top, cause they are kinda tucked back there, about six inches. Once all four screws have been removed, the assembly will just pop out of place. Now you'll notice on the side of your storage or cabinet here, uh, you'll have a USB connector and a power connector for your media hub. Just go ahead and disconnect those two. Now you can pull this out and set it aside. 
All right, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do underneath the carpet here is a uh, floor AC vent. Now this was for the center seat, the rear vents. Um, so basically what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and remove it. So um, right about here in the carpet, there's a little push pin. And then over here about, there's a push pin. So what you need to do is you need to lift up on the plastic to release it from that. You can kind of feel back through here exactly where it is. You can use your regular screwdriver to kind of pry it up over that, as well as the other side here. And once you do that, you can slide it out. So you can see right here and right here. You're basically lifting it up out of those little um, guides or pins and then you could slide it out. All right guys, the next part of the install, we're going to install this custom wiring that we designed here at infotainment.com. Basically what this wiring is going to do is it's, it's going to extend the connector that we used before for the center seat. It's going to extend the wiring that's associated with that. Um, we're gonna be able to bring it, plug it in under here, tuck it under the carpet and then run it under the carpet here to the front That'll allow us to plug into the center console, the floor center console, um, so we could retain all of our features. Um, so it's really easy to do. We'll go ahead and do that at this point. So we went ahead and pulled it through. So now we're just gonna go ahead and connect it and set it back under the seat. All right, now we're gonna run the male portion of the connector. Now that the underside is connected underneath the driver's seat, uh, we're going to run this underneath the carpet up to the front area here. So we're gonna just tuck the wiring under a few of the existing wires, and then simply run it up front. Pull all of our slack. Now we're ready to connect this into our new floor mounted center console. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to install the front bracket. Now this bracket mounts right here, but before we put it in, we have to go ahead and put in some clips. Then we can take the eight millimeter screws and set them into place. and screw them in. All right, now we're going to install the rear bracket. So you'll notice on the bracket itself, it says front. So it's gonna be situated just like this right here. Um, you'll notice there's a hole already, um, so we can run our first bolt. There is a piece of tape on the passenger side so you can go ahead and just remove that. Then you can set your bracket into position. Now this here is a uh, half inch. Okay, I wanna show you guys just real quick the front of the console here. So this is the vent. This is going to feed into the back um, vents for the rear passengers. Um, so we're gonna to wanna to connect into there. This here is where we're going to plug in our extension cable, the one that we ran underneath the carpet. It'll just come and plug in right here. Now the existing uh, media hub that was in the vehicle from the factory, we unplugged two wires. We're actually going to plug those into here. Um, in some cases, you don't have to do that. You can actually use these. Depends if your truck's pre-wired or not. Um, so what I recommend is just disconnect these two and plug the ones from your truck directly into this media hub here. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this console into the vehicle and we're going to uh, get it all, all installed.
All right, so here's the connections we have to make. We have to put the console in so it goes around this lower vent here. So once we have it nice and snug in there, we can go ahead and plug in our, our old media hub, which used to be mounted here. We're gonna plug these connectors into the new media hub. If you kind of tug on it a little bit, you'll get a little extra slack. Uh, there is a little push pin there that's kind of holding it. And then obviously this is our extension. We're gonna go ahead and plug that into that uh, port on the front of the console. So we'll go ahead and do all that right now. All right, so we have all of our connectors plugged in. Now we're gonna kind of bring it in at an angle so we can make sure that our floor vent connects to it. And then it slides, just slides right into place. You'll know you'll run into place because everything will line up on both sides. Now we can um, put in our 10 millimeter screws. There's gonna be two on the right side and two on the left. We went ahead and put the front one in. Now you can put in your cap. Now if your cap didn't come with your center console, your lower console here, um, you can order those separately from the dealer. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install our right instrument panel closeout. And our driver's side closeout. All right, guys, as you can see, we are now done with that center console. It just makes the truck so much nicer to have all that extra storage. It's gonna be awesome. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to put it in this particular truck for this build is so we can put a, a CD player, the factory CD player, and the factory smartphone wireless charger in this particular truck. Um, so, now that we have that all in, I wanted to tell you guys a couple things. So, you are gonna have some leftover hardware, naturally. You took out the center jump seat. You're gonna have two bolts left over that hold it to the, uh, to the truck. You're also gonna have four nuts. Now, these are the four nuts that we took off on the passenger side uh, seat. You will not need to obviously put these back on. So you probably wanna put these in a Ziploc. If you decide to sell that jump seat, maybe online or to a friend or something or on a forum, go ahead and take that receptacle, the seatbelt receptacle off on the, on the uh, driver's side and then make sure you include these screws and nuts as well. So at this particular point, we are now done. We're gonna go ahead and install the passenger seat using the four bolts and we'll be ready to go. All right, our four bolts are on. 
and we have our plug plugged in underneath. All right, guys, we now have the floor mounted center console installed. It just looks really, really good. We also added a factory CD player upgrade to this, this center console and the smartphone wireless charger we added to this console. So those are two really convenient features that we added to it. But this in itself is now installed. Everything's buttoned up, all the trim pieces are on. So let me take a minute and kind of show you some of the cool features. All right, so if you lift up on the armrest, there's actually two compartments. There's, a, there's an upper compartment, and then it gives you access to the lower compartment. This cup holder here with this tray actually slides back and forth. You can just press this button in. So as you can see, a lot of space um, on the front and the back. Um, there's little flaps and things like that so you can organize things. It's just really, really convenient to have a nice big floor-mounted center console. Um, you'll also notice here we did put the wireless smartphone charger in here and we put a CD player in. So all you gotta do is just put your smartphone in there and it'll start charging. So really cool, such an awesome upgrade guys, not overly hard to install. All right guys, I just wanted to mention, if you click the link in this video or below this video in YouTube, it'll bring you to a page on Infotainment's website. Now on that page, it'll tell you where you can get this and the other parts that are needed. So make sure you go to infotainment.com for more information on how you can get this component. Thanks for watching.